Hi guys, Patty from Cece and Patsy's Boutique with part two of bottle art. When we left off, you knew I applied all this clay with different molds and using type on, type on glue to the bottle. I actually used a round rough wood circle base and attached the bottle to that. We did a rusty patina effect on the top. It's a custom rusty patina. I use various colors and textures. And then at the bottom, at the base, I did like greens. To give it a mossy feel, I do use greens and browns, various greens, glazes, textures. What I'm doing now over the clay, now that the clay is dry, is I'm applying a grunge style glaze. I custom made this glaze, um, but you can also buy them already pre-made, the glazes. Uh, to make my own, what I used was a uh, gray, black, gray and black paint mixed with a top sealer. I use a matte sealer for this and then a little water. All of these are water-based that I mix together. And now I'm applying it all over the bottle and then I'm taking a moist cloth and wiping it back. And we're going to do this over the whole bottle just to give it that the clay a little bit of more definition and depth and to add a little character and get all into those little nooks and crannies of all the various molds I added to the bottle. So you're just going to continue to apply that and with a damp cloth, wipe it all back to get to the look that you, you're hoping to achieve. Sorry, I'm playing with my lighting because it didn't look very bright. Sorry about that. Just trying to figure all this new technology out. So, okay, back to the bottle. So we got the grunge glaze going. And again, I just mixed some black and gray paint, put a top sealer, a matte top sealer, and some water. She mixed it all together and created my own glaze. Again, we're just going to keep going over the white clay. When the clay dries, it will be a white color. There are various color clays you can get, but I used a white. So again, moisten your cloth with your spritzer water gun. And we're going to wipe all that glaze back. You want it down in the nooks and crannies, but not overpowering. Looks like I went a little off camera. Sorry about that. Continue your glaze until you achieve the look that you're hoping for. Again, this is a custom glaze that I make. You can buy pre-made glazes. Various shops and paint manufacturers do offer it. Now I'm just brushing some of that grunge glaze across the bottom where I did a moss effect. And we're going to wipe that back. Again, this is just to add to the age and the depth of the bottle and to go with the vibe I'm looking for. This is all a matter of preference of what you like. Glaze is not something you have to do. You could actually just go ahead from just the clay and start painting in however way you want. Those three little dishes of colors you see, we're going to get to that step next. But all they are are chalk paint that I mix with some water to water them down. We have a sage green, a soft um, pink. Well, actually more a hot pink, I guess. But I mixed it with a little white and toned it down. And in the other little container is an antique and gel. But again, let's just finish this glaze up and we'll get to the next steps. This video is a little longer due to the fact that there's a lot of steps that I'm going to be showing you. So please bear with me. I also know I could speed up this process, but I'm not quite sure how to do that yet. So I'm still new to editing videos. Again, bear with me. I'm getting there. So now we're taking some of that antique and glaze, which is a soft, soft sable, like a camel color. And we're going to add a little bit of that to the mossy area at the bottom. 
Again, this is just adding a little more depth and character, and it's going with the look that I'm hoping to achieve. And like I said, this one that I'm applying is an antique and gel. It's like a very soft sable or a camel color. Very warm and earthy. And that's what I want at the base of this bottle is I want it to have a very earthy vibe. Again, I'm going for a woodland fairy home. So I have to have the earth tones going. And this is just my process. There are many other processes out there. The trick is just experiment, have fun, take the, take the chance and grab a bottle and just have some fun with it. I'm adding a little more of that antique and glaze to the top. Now I told you at the top, I did a rusty patina using some rust orange, yellows, dark browns, um, teal, some copper. We applied that and some texture. I did some salt wash. So we applied a lot of texture at the top. And I wanted that to look like a rusty old metal roof. Right now we're just putting over it some antique and glaze. The antique and glaze will also help seal your bottle and your, your finish that you already did. So there's two benefits to it. You get a cool finish and it helps seal what you already have there. You won't have to worry about it pulling up. Now I'm going to take some of this antique and glaze and I'm going to actually go right around on the wood base. These are just wood base rounds. You, I got it. Uh, I got them at Michael's, I believe. I think you get a set of five in a pack or four. I think most people use them for coasters, but I attach my bottle right to the wood round so that I have a nice organic rough edge wood base. I think I'm going to actually add some moss later to the base. I don't know yet. We'll see. Let's see how the bottle turns out. So again, that's all I'm doing is applying some of the antique and gel to the base to give it more a warm, warm feeling. So there we have the grunges, the glazes, the antique and gel. Looking pretty good. Now let's start applying some of our colors. I used that rose pink that I mixed together, sort of in a dry brush water fashion, did the, the roses and I pulled using the damp cloth, I pulled some of the color back. I rubbed it back off. I didn't want it too bright and vibrant, but I wanted some color there. And again, with the sage green, I went around and did all the leaves that I applied. And now using a brown, antique and gel. That's what I used on the door. And we're going to do a couple layers. There's the sage green watered down. This is pink mixed with white and some water. And there's that mm, yummy brown antique and gel. So we're going to use these. Oh, and don't forget my other antique and gel, which is like a camel color. So again, for the pink on the roses, I just, oh, antique and moss. I have a lot of different antique and gels going on. A lot of product goes into this. So we did the roses in the soft, in the lovely pink. And like I said, I brushed it on in a dry brush effect. And then using a damp cloth, I pulled it back. Same with the green on the leaves. Now I'm going to use an antique and gel in a moss color green. And we're going to add a little more depth to the leaves. And I'm just going to apply it and then dab a little. And it will also add some texture to it. And we're going to go around the whole bottle with us. Again, if I was smart, I would know how to speed through this part, but I'm still learning this app. So give me, give me a little time. I'll have that down to a, to a science soon. So for now, you just got to watch me fill in all these little leaves or you can fast forward it yourself, but we're just going to go around adding until I get the right texture, the right color, the right depth. I'm just going to keep dabbling around different greens, the antique and gels, the rose colors. 
we're just going to keep applying and keep going until you get the look you want on your, on your piece. I apologize for the sniffles, guys. I have a cold, a nasty cold, and it's really getting to me. New York weather has been kind of crazy. You wake up, it's winter. By noon, it's spring. Then we might even hit some summer temps. And then we're back to cold. So, so like I said, we're just going to keep taking these little colors. You're just going to play around until you get the depth and the character and the texture, the ambiance that you want. It's all a matter of preference and what you're looking for. This bottle is a little, little more different than my previous bottles because I really went all out and added a lot of detail. Not to mention, I've been wanting these, that mold that I created the fairy door with. So I've been really wanting to do a Woodland Fairy bottle. So this one I really, I really had a lot of fun with. And that's the, that's the important thing is when you're creating, make sure you're creating from your heart. Have fun. Bottles I find um, very relaxing because you get to really get lost in your, your art and have fun with your imagination. So it's also something you can do with the kids, bottle art and working with air dry clay. So that's some, another fun project you can do with your own kids. I will say these are also really good sellers. The whining you hear in the background is my dog's. I have two dogs and they're whining. They know they're not supposed to be in my studio, so they're sneaking in. So let's just continue and go around and apply our greens and our glazes and our colors to get the looks we want. I apologize for not being able to speed it up like others do. I'm still learning. I am not tech suave, guys. Sorry about that. So please bear with me. As I go, my videos will get a lot better. As you see, I'm being really fussy about how my colors are. I don't want the pink too, too bright and powerful with the soft greens, and I don't want the greens too muddied. I still want some depth and highlights to it. So I'm going to be really fussy on those. And again, because some of these are smaller appliques from the clay, you need smaller detail brushes to get in there. We're really making some progress. I'm really loving how this is turning out. I'm pretty excited. When you watch this video, if you manage to hang on for the full 29 minutes, um, leave in the comments, do you do bottle art? Have you ever done bottle art? Or are you thinking about doing it? And has this video or the previous one inspired you to, to try it out? Here I'm to add some of that lovely camel color antique and gel, actually glaze that I made myself by mixing a few things together. And again, we're just going to apply that over because I want that antique and gel all over. See, that? that's going to help soften that bright pink and the greens. We're going to soften and blend all that, got, all that together so it blends perfectly. It's not too harsh. It's a nice, soft, aged look. And that's what I'm going for. I want it to seem, feel actually aged. I want warmth, I want depth. So again, it's all gonna be up to your preference of the look you're going for, but have fun. Like for this one, like I said, I really wanted warmth, earth tones, um, textures and yummy goodness like that. So I'm really being a fussy butt about this bottle. But look at that, the pinks aren't, aren't bright. That toned them right down. The greens aren't harsh. We got some nice warm tones to the backdrop clay.
Now we got a little black paint. Um, as you can see, I use various products, whatever I have on hand. So don't think you have to go out when I show you the products I'm using. Don't think you have to go out and buy any of these products. Use what you have on hand. If you have any questions, you can always message me. Like I said, I make my own custom glazes with things I, products I already have. Now I'm going to take this black and with a very small detail brush on the door, there is a little mail slot and a window. So we're going to go over them in black. I'm going to dab them back just a little bit too, because I don't want the black too harsh. I want it known that it's, it's there, but not a solid, more translucent. So as you see, I applied it and then I dabbed it back just a little. And we're going to do it to the window on the door as well. Again, I'm just going to apply the black, and because I don't want it too harsh or too, too solid, I'm going to dab it back a little just so it has a little translucence, and so it looks more like the age weather. Now, around the door, there is a nice crease to point uh, to really enhance that it's a door. So with my detail brush, I'm just going to go into that little nook and cranny and add a little black in there, almost like a dry brushing with the black. We're going to get it right down in there just to define the door a little bit more. And I'm going to dab a little in around the door. There's some leafage, which I did greens and warm earth tones. So now I'm going to dab a little black in there just to get a little more definition into the leafing around the door itself. At the top of the bottle where I'm holding it, I, I will actually do one or two coats of black up there. So now here I'm just using various colors because I'm trying to get some really good texture and depth to those the leafage and foliage around the door. Just so it makes it stand out a little bit more. I spend a lot of time on the bottles that I create. Um, I know you don't have to. There's various ways you can do it, but I find it so relaxing and soothing. So I don't actually mind the time I, I spend on doing a bottle. And I know each one of my bottles are unique and one of a kind. So. But again, it's more because it's so relaxing. A little more antique and gel. I'm going to add a little bit more to the base for that mossy look. I went a little too heavy with the deep brown, so we're going to go a little, little more with the mossy green. Later, I'm going to add a little bit of that mossy green to the top, too, over the rusty patina at the top, just to give it that, like, moss Maya grew up the chimney or up on the roof. I'm loving this, guys. What do you think? All right. Where are we going next? Okay. Let's take some texture... This is kind of like an already salt wash mix. It's a part of the Rusty Patina set. And it's very textured. And this is the, the goldenrod or yellow, deep yellow. You could also mix this if you have yellow paint at home and baking soda or salt wash or sand. You can create your own textured. So I'm just going to dab a little bit of this lovely goldenrod right into where those foliage and leaves are around the door. Again, I'm just adding a little more texture and a little more color and depth. Not much. I'm using a very fine detail brush and just lightly dabbing it into those foliage areas. We're 
We're almost done, guys. I promise. Only nine minutes left. And again, you can fast forward through these sections. Well, let's put a little in the leaves at the bottom. Maybe a couple over here. Let's see. There you go. Let's see how it adds a little more depth and character. Let's hit it with the dryer. We're going to give it a flash dry before we start our next step. These little craft dryers, if you don't have one, are great to have on hand. You can get them pretty reasonable and cheap at any craft store. I believe Walmart even has them. Um, if you have a local craft store, that's even better. To support local and small businesses. And you can also, if you don't have any around you, you can also get them online on Amazon. But please, check your small business store first. So we're just going to get this, give this a good dry, going around the whole bottle. Now we're going to apply some metallic waxes. The first one I'm using is a rose metallic. I believe it's from Redesign. Again, please use whatever waxes or what you have on hand. This is not a necessary step either, but I always like a little shimmer and glam on mine. So the first one is a rose gold or rose metallic. And we're going to apply that to the roses and to the fairy wings just to give them a little shimmer, a little more metallic pink, if you would say. Now I'm using my finger. You can also use a brush. I just lightly put some on. Very little. If you get too much on your finger, you can wipe on the cloth or just rub your fingers together. And that way you can use the two fingers. Now I'm using what is called iridescent, I believe, or diamond dust. I'm not quite sure, but it gives a beautiful, beautiful glow. Again, I think that one's also by Redesign, but again, please use whatever waxes or metallics that you have on hand. And it's not a necessary step. Like I said, I just like shimmer and, and glam. So I add it, <clears throat> excuse me, I added some waxes to my, my roses, to the leaves. I'm gonna even add a little on the door to frame out that window and the mailbox. So we're just gonna keep going around with the waxes. And again, you're gonna apply them until you get it to the desired look you want. It's all a matter of preference. Now, if you remember, I did a textured base wrap of air dry clay on the bottle. So I'm probably gonna apply even a little in there. Let's apply even some around the base of the, oh, there you go. I, I can't see it either, guys. Sorry about that. Camera didn't pick it up. Um, we're going to apply a little around the base on the moss and on the top around the rusty patina. So we're just going to keep going. Like I said, this is a preference. It's what you want. Um, you do not have to use metallic waxes. But that's what I was using. So we use, okay, the one I'm using now is actually Diamond Dust by Redesign. We use uh, Rich Copper. I also use the Brush Iron. And it is actually by Art Alchemy. Metallic wax is rose gold. So those are the waxes I use. Oh, and I used a uh, rub and buff antique gold. So we have like five different waxes going on. 
and I'm just trying to create the look that I'm I see in my head. So we're just going to keep going around with the waxes so I get the look that I want. Um, I use my finger. You can use a small detail brush, um, whatever you, you feel comfortable with. And I know you see me put my finger in there a lot, but there's really not a lot I'm putting on my hand. It's very minimal. Look at all that shimmer. Can you guys see that? Can you see the light picking up the shimmers? It's gorgeous. Just gorgeous. I'm so happy with how this bottle is turning out. All right, guys, we're down to the last four minutes. Three and a half. If you stuck with me this long, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I appreciate you watching. Like I said, I am new to doing these videos. So as I go along, I am sure I will learn more. Like I said, let's add some waxes even up to the, the rest of the Tina areas. I want some real shimmer and glam on this bottle. Once more, thank you if you stuck around for this whole video so far. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit like. Um, send me a comment. Be kind. But please send comments. Um, and subscribe to my page if you like this video. I'd really appreciate it. Like I said, we're just doing finishing up with the waxes. Again, I am Patty with CC and Patsy's Boutique. I am located in the Hudson Valley region of New York. You can follow me on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok. <coughs> goal is to start getting a little better with these videos so again please bear with me i am sure the videos will get a lot better as i learn more about this technology so we're just finishing up with the, the waxes and as you know i said i used five different we used a copper a rich copper we used diamond dust we did a rose gold uh, antique gold and I use some iron and again I'm applying these to various areas to create an age woodland fairy home style bottle I just love how this is turning out here we go so the top finial is actually a vintage brass doorknob um, actually not a doorknob it's actually a t uh, I want to say cabinet, maybe it's screwed in, but it was kind of like maybe a tie back. And then I took some gold detailed ribbon and swirled it around the top. I glued that finial on top. I love it. It's pretty heavy too. So we got those soft colors. We got the grunging in the glazes. We got texture and copper, rich tones earth tones. Isn't this just gorgeous, guys? I think around the base, I'm going to put um, moss. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.